Welcome to Oh Brother, a podcast of three brothers trying to figure it all out with your hosts, Brandon, Colin, and Aaron. On this week's show, Stream of Consciousness Mode. Hello. This work. Huh? Does this work? Does it sound good? Yeah, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. It's doing the same thing again where I have to, like, flip over to a different screen. Hold on. Let me try. Are you you on your phone again? Ah, better. Are you on your phone? Uh, yes. Okay. Every time I try to use my laptop, it takes like 20 years to load, and sure. ain't nobody's got time for that. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Ooh. Fun stuff. This, this works better. Is Brandon on his way? Could be, I think. Brandon. So do you have oh, do you have two um dog sitting things now, Colin? Why do you have two Instagrams? Well, we have um Pet Sitter Confessional, which is the food, which is the podcast, and then we have Funky Bunch Pet Care, which is the actual pet sitting business. Mm. So that's why we have two. We don't Okay. Yeah, so we don't advertise our pet sitting services on Pet Sitter Confessional. Um, yeah. Because that's a... Yeah. Buy pet sitters for pet sitters. So, that, that's why we have two separate ones. Okay. Mm-hmm. That makes sense now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and Megan runs all of that. because I... Can't be bought. <laughs> uh, the uh, the the picture that was was posted on because I started following the other one. It was it was your picture of what was it like? Uh, hi, I'm Cullen. I'm the co-founder or the co-owner of. Oh yeah. yeah I was like, yeah. oh wow. Yeah, Colin. Well, we did that. Um, basically, we did that whenever for our um, pet store conventional one. Mm-hmm. Um, Megan had one a couple days ago too. Uh, just try and post those every now and then. Or I was like, "Hey, it's us. Hey, hey, we're real people. Yes, people buy from people. If you're not a person, nobody's going to buy from you." Oh, that's a very true statement. Wow. <laughs> you My eyes have been, been opened. I've always wanted like the uh what is it? Like the the hard like box set of like the Walking Dead series. Oh yeah. Yeah. That or or Scrubs. One of my other random shows that I like. But Scrubs is on like I think it's on Am uh on Netflix. So I can just watch that. But no, I, I've always like nowadays, definitely when I was in college, I was like, "Oh man, I got to get the box sets of things." But after like moving so many times, I'm like, "I don't, I don't want the box sets of things anymore. <laughs> I don't, I don't want that. No, because then I have to put it, put it somewhere." Yeah, yeah. The only box set we ever owned was that of. Um, oh, I take that back. We've owned two. We've owned the box set of Lost which is Megan's all-time favorite television show. And then we owned the, uh, oh, no, oh, no. It, um, oh, why did my brain just completely drop that? Um, wow, man. 
<laughs> probably because you're using the past tense, so that means you have sold it and do not own it anymore. Well, so you well, don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> King, King of Queens. We we owned a box set of King. Oh, of Queens. really? Right. Yeah, which is another one uh, that we uh, we both. That's, it's definitely underrated. It's Leah Remini is a gem in that series, I gotta say. <laughs> she is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, the joke that we still pull from that one, uh, the, the gentleman who played Arthur, the dad. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. When he talks about he's going to get pizza from the local joint, uh, Domino's, it's just around the corner. <laughs> he keeps talking it up. He loves their breadsticks. And they're like, you mean Domino's? <laughs> Yeah. What do you call it? Domino's. <laughs> Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> oh. the, I, I agree with Aaron that partially the box set things are annoying because you have to like, they're big, right? Because I mean, you have like eight yeah. discs in a thing. <laughs> and so <clears throat> they are kind of cumbersome and big, but also... <clears throat> There's something mildly reassuring about owning physical media. Yeah. Because, like, a lot of times it's just like, I want to watch this thing. Gone. Sorry. Yeah. Doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Like, but, but I want to see the. I want to. <laughs> why you do? Come on now. <laughs> why are you gone? <laughs> are you gone? So, like, because for a while, like, Amazon had all the old Top Gear episodes on there. I know. Right? Yeah. And I downloaded a bunch of them for the plane flight to Australia a couple years ago. Right. Of course. Yeah. And uh, yeah. now, because they don't have them on there anymore, it's like, nope, can't have it. So don't, doesn't exist. You lost all access to the thing, even though you downloaded it. You can't watch it. Nope. Because you, you don't own it. So there's that, like, there's that aspect. It's super annoying. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you want to find a thing and you can't. Or. They put it behind the paywall of a different service that you don't use. And you're like, but I don't want to use another one. Yeah. I just want to watch. Never mind. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, I don't want to be subscribed to 18 things, right? It's not. (laughs) That's the exact opposite. You you lied to me. You're all like, oh, it's better than satellite or cable, right? Because you can get all the stuff you want to watch here, except for you can't. Because now... Everybody started their own streaming services to compete with Netflix because they saw Netflix making all the money and they're like, wait, wait, we own this. What if we have our own service? (laughs) So now you got to subscribe to like 80 things to watch all the shows that you could have just watched on cable all the time. (laughs) And then you start adding it up. You're like, like, wait, so how much was I paying for cable before? And now my a la carte is I'm really not saving a whole lot more money. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And we, so we just still use, we still have like dish or whatever. Cause, you know, oh, yeah. it's just not, <laughs> oh, yeah. what? Well, it's, it's fine. It's, it's, and, it's, it's fine. <laughs> and there's, again, the old man in me. There's something like, I don't know if it's like nostalgic or like, it, like mildly. Like, kind of the the unknown of like I'm gonna watch TV now. It's like a surprise, right? Yeah. <laughs> there's some extent of like, what is it? What am I gonna watch? Right? That's kind of like yeah. when I was growing up. You know, that was kind of the the fun, not fun. It was kind of annoying, right? When you had five channels and you just had to pick something, right? You had no idea and just watch it. Good yeah. stuff. Could be good. And without a who guide, knows? You had no idea what was actually coming up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was no guide at all. It was an adventure, right? Was, Looking back on it, it seems adventurous. I, at the time, I have distinct memories of being like, "Oh my gosh, why is there terrible things like that all the time?" Right. <clears throat> but there's that kind of sense of like, I'm going to watch something. I got to find something. And so, like you know, if you're going to watch. You know, if, you, if you're going to watch TV while you eat or whatever, you're like, I got to find something to watch. Or I have free time. I want to watch TV. Uh-huh. I'm just going to watch it. So sometimes you have to go out of your comfort zone and like, I'm just going to watch this. I don't know what this is. Let's watch it. See what it is. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> well, it is true. It is true. It's true. You know? When you're like, 
when you're just starting to try and figure out um or i i don't know i i guess i do like some of it if they you don't know what's going to happen next and you're just kind of be guiding being guided along on the journey almost, <laughs> almost i guess you know mm-hmm. like what are you going to discover like what's next because sometimes it's like well i would never intentionally sit down and try and find this movie but i am now watching it and i am very invested in it <laughs> Yeah, just because it happened to be on. And right, like you hear about the, I don't have this problem because I don't have Netflix, right? But mm-hmm. you, you know, the scrolling paralysis of you just sort of sit down to watch something and you just scroll forever because you can't figure out what you want to watch. Yeah. Like with yeah. TV, it's just on. So you're like, well, I got to watch something now because otherwise I'm going to miss <laughs> half the movie, right? Because it's happening in real time and you can't like start it whenever. Yeah. So that's the the upside i guess is like well it's on right now so i gotta watch it yeah yeah per- the paralysis of choice right sometimes having yeah. a lot of options is very good if you are colin funkhauser <clears throat> options are ver ver bad because <laughs> <laughs> because you start to second guess yourself and is this what you want to be watching well what about this other one did you really like all aspects of this what are you missing right then obviously you get this aspect of like i could be missing other things right now um or that's true I, i'm spending my time watching this while this other thing is also out there so yeah all that to yeah, say so when we finally like... picked a logo from mike <laughs> to, to hey. after after some much uh gnashing of teeth and bloodshed um and uh only only mild fighting and, and yelling between there you go and I, <laughs> we, Mostly, if it would have just been happening in real time, you would have had to pick one and gone with it, no matter what. See, this is the this is I no I, I hand on heart. It got to the point where I was basically paralyzed by choice and possible and possibilities, right? Of being, them being nigh on infinite of things that could be done. Of like, I mean, I was getting to the point where I was like, well, I don't know if I like the curvature of Funky Bunch in here. Maybe it needs to be a little oh, dear tighter. Goodness. Like, what if we brought that in by five degrees? At which point, <laughs> Megan was like, you have to pick something or I'm going to make something and start posting it everywhere and you'll just have to live with it. So at that point, get I, it, Megan, I do was, it. I was just like, I was like, OK, fine. Like, ultimately, just like whatever. Like, I'm I'm still not 100 percent happy with it. Um, whatever uh, it's it is. It is made. It is being finalized. Uh, there we go. So whatever <laughs> there we go and, you know, see you could have just done the yeah she just had her pick one and go with it oh, yeah. and just like 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 with the old saturday night movies like late night saturday movies on yep. network television it was just a movie well, the, go I, <laughs> I think, it's gonna be your logo i think genuinely <laughs> i i would have had a much more pleasant experience if if that's what had been done at the beginning of like, give me some, give me some ideas of what your business is, what kind of emotions you're trying to do. I'm going to go create kind of like a swatch of possibilities and we're going to talk about it. Like that would have been a lot more helpful to me than give me what you want it to look like. Because then it was more like, I'm trying to do all of the design work, but I'm not a designer and a, uh, and I'm just trying to get him to make it. So anyway, I, I feel like the process when we redesign this in another year, because I can't live with it anymore. Um, I'm going oh, no. <laughs> to find somebody to, to be stay like, tuned <laughs> listeners for your favorite, your favorite corner over the podcast, <laughs> Collins logo tribulations. <laughs> <laughs> and then to make matters worse, it was like, okay, are we finally like uh, genuinely like four months of going back and forth on this logo? I think is where we ended up. And lots of lots of pain and anguish and sleepless nights of me scrolling through. Oh her- my god! Because I, I was like, "Well, I, what do I want the dog and cat to look like?" So I'd scroll through options oh, and no. I'd like save them, and I'd be like, "Well, I don't like this, and I like this about this one. I don't know about this anyway." And then he's like, "Oh, yeah, with the package that you got, you also get." He's like, "I'm also going to make you." Um, a, a facebook banner but what do you want that to look like and i was like oh no uh, no no uh, no 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 uh, no uh, no uh, <laughs> so, Colin said, Colin just said blue i want it blue <laughs> Solid color. that's it so what we did was we literally we went and we found somebody's and we were like 
do exactly this. Uh, and like, and I'm not going to just make copy of this. Don't use their photo. Use a photo of us and just make literally exactly the same thing. So we did. Uh, <laughs> Colin's Facebook picture is some random dude. Like, <laughs> who's this guy? I don't know. Like the, like the, uh, like he just the, told me to copy it, man. I don't know what it is. Like the stand or like the uh, example picture that they have in frames. Like, if you just, oh, yeah. Those. <laughs> random, <laughs> random girl on swing. Yes. Right? Like, <laughs> guy sense. walking. That one. <laughs> It was like stock photos. I love stock yeah, photos. They're so too. silly. And then he was like, oh, also, also, um, you get, <laughs> also, also. <laughs> you get, um, I will make you some service icons. So icons that are going to match the services that you offer. And I was like, you mean seven more logos? Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Wait, seven? Or what other like service five. does you? It was like five. It Walking. Like boarding. Um, house boarding drop-ins uh dog walks. Oh. um those are the four main ones um that's that grooming. Grooming. grooming i don't do grooming i don't do grooming but then it was like okay, spying on your neighbors I, yeah, creeper um i will hide in your bushes for a hundred dollars um no uh, but just like okay well do we do we bring up cat sitting because you know do we bring up that do we bring up that we'll do exotic? no because it's a pet and you're a pet sitter. Right. So that's implied. Okay. <laughs> so, but basically, right. he wanted you don't to need a banner, ever, a logo for it. Well, we do rabbits and cats and goldfish, <laughs> hamsters, and chinchillas, right. uh, <laughs> birds. Exactly. <laughs> so he wanted to create a iguanas, turtles. He called them icons. And I was like, you mean logos? <laughs> it, took me, <laughs> it took me four months to come up with one logo. And you won't now want me to bring up five. So basically, I said, make them. And I and don't even bother like sending them back. I will just accept whatever they want. I didn't buy your beard today. Fair. <laughs> no problem. Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> so... Oh, oh. Wait. Hey. Here we go. I want to go back to this network TV thing for just a moment Sorry. because I had a thought. Sorry. That's fine. I want to know if anybody else has experience or if it's me. Because I used to do this. When I, the, <clears throat> I thought of it after I did the Saturday Night Movie thing because I just remembered that existed right now. Right. So used to, there would just be like on like Fox or whatever. There was just like late at night, there would just be like play a movie. Yeah. Right. And because there was no guide, it was really hard to know what on earth it was going to be or what it was. Uh, I watched the TV guide in the newspaper didn't go that far. Right. It didn't didn't usually go that late. And so I have all these snippets of memories of movies that I have no idea what they are. And I've never seen them again. And I <laughs> and I does anybody do you have do any of you have that? Like did this happen to you? Did you like stay up late with your friends or whatever? We were like it was on and we were watching them while we were doing other stuff, you know, like playing video games or something, and it was on and we'd watch it and and I have all these memories of, of parts of movies. And I have no idea what the movie is at all. None. Okay. And I don't even know what the movie's about, really. I just like remember certain scenes <laughs> and, and parts of scenes, right? Yeah, and parts of scene or like a thing a character did, and that's it. And I have no <laughs> other reference for what the movie is. And sometimes it makes me a little crazy because I don't know. <laughs> And I, had, I don't really know how to find out what the movie is and what at all. do you Google for that, right? <laughs> yeah, and when you have a part of the scene. <laughs> and it's some random movie, so there's like, we're like, what's the actor? I don't know. <laughs> it was a guy and a lady with yeah. curly hair. It was a movie from the 90s, I guess. Maybe. Or a there's two. Piece. There's, two there's two specific ones that I want to share. Okay. Just to get this out there, because it drives me crazy. Okay. There was one, and it's I don't, the only part I remember is it's the 
one of the guys from the show Coach, right? Not Coach, and not the big old dumb guy. The other guy, the like friend guy, him. It was him, and he's in a river, and a log falls on him, and he's trapped, and the water's like rising or something. And there's a person who is trying to like keep him alive by giving him mouth to mouth in the water, and he dies. Spoilers for this mystery movie that I don't know what it is. Wow. And it's like this really big dramatic thing, and that's the only part of the movie I remember. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, it's this part. I don't know. It was like towards the end, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what this movie is. I don't know why they're in a river. I don't remember who the other person is. I don't know how the log fell on him. <laughs> I don't know why the river's rising, because that seems weird. It's like, oh, it's not a flood, because the water's like clear, right? And it's like, you can see his face the whole time, so I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know if it's raining, maybe it's raining, I don't know. But it's this whole it's this whole thing where that is the only thing I remember with this movie. And I have no idea what this movie is called. Gosh. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't know. Right? Like, what on how do you even <laughs> Yeah. I don't know how to Google that. I don't know what to do. But at least I remember the guy's name. The other one that I remember is I don't know. It's about like barnstormer like air air show thing with like biplanes and stuff they're like a stunt pilot that's all i remember i remember there's a scene where i think they crash at some point and it's like uh, i i vaguely recall it's like a that thing where the movie's like something happens at the beginning and then they're like worried about it forever and then it like re happens at the end you know what I'm talking about, right, where it's like the worst thing <clears throat> like, possibly, yeah, yeah, like the worst thing that could possibly happen, then it happens. Like this is another like traumatic movie moment here. So the the plane, I don't know. There's all this weird stuff. I think there was a girl, probably. I don't know, but they're they're like barnstormers, air show, by planes, like old timey, whatever. The plane like, crashes, and it catches on fire, and the guy's friend is like in there. And they can't get him out know and so he's like alive what well, he's like conscious and like burning you know mm-hmm. and they can't get him out so to put him out of his way, they like knock him out with a two by four from the barn that he crashed through so that he can like die peacefully in the plane instead of <laughs> seeming in agony anymore <laughs> there was that part and there was another weird part like about a stunt like they're doing a wing walk thing or something I don't remember exactly yeah. but yeah are these vague movies uh, <laughs> movies of this weird movie about barnstorming airplanes and a guy killed by a two by four yeah I definitely don't know how to google that one <laughs> I, just... yeah, I, just... I, I can't say I have any of those kind of experiences. Okay. <laughs> Dang it, just me again. Sorry. I don't know, Aaron. <laughs> I I'm the, I was trying to tra- I was kind of transfixed on Brandon's said airplane, and for some reason my mind went to some like Disney movie where it's like these people that like crash on a mountain, and then for some reason that transported my brain to the book Hatchet. That we had to read in like middle school, and then oh, I yes. just kind of like sixth grade special hatched. Yeah, I, I just I just kind of stopped listening because I was like, man, like what was that movie? Man, that would suck. Man, do you remember Hatchet? <laughs> of course, I remember Hatchet. <laughs> well, that's crazy. And then that took me to another middle school classic of oh, like that, that Survivor Man episode where he strayed himself in the frozen north. Oh, anyway, middle school. <laughs> no, it, was, it was the uh, the. Uh, the Klondike or something where like it's it's like the the kid and he has like, a dog and a sled and they go try to do prospecting stuff in Alaska. No, uh, I remember that one. Uh, but yeah, my 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 brain was transfixed on There's a lot um, of books like that aren't there trying to remember the the, <laughs> the plot of Hatchet, so I completely zoned out. It's fair. All I remember about Hatchet is yes, plane crash. 
that one part he finds the dead pilot in the plane. Yes. He has a hatchet. Check. Stuff happened. <laughs> oh. That's all I so got. I, I don't remember I, after that. I remember the beginning of that book really well. <laughs> yeah. I, and then there was like a bear attack. But I was trying to explain the... Is there? The Yeah, I think so. I was <laughs> trying to explain the plot to the book ben, Benicula to Shelby. So I was like... <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow. Aaron, I need this more. is a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> <sighs> All right, all right, all right, all right. No, all that's right. that's fair. That's a, that's a tricky one. <laughs> all right, hold up. It's, it's so, one of those ones you like. It sounds like you're like, oh yeah, and then when you start saying words out loud, it's like, oh this 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 is a lot weirder than I thought it was. Gonna be. She'll, she'll be giving me a blank stare the whole time. So <laughs> basically, it's it's a book about a a cat and a dog and their family, and the family brings home a rabbit. But strange events start happening, and at at night, and they find they keep finding vegetables that look white. I definitely remember <laughs> there's a white zucchini moment, which I burst out laughing. But it turns out that the bunny <laughs> is some sort of fruit vampire bunny, and the dog and cat try to uh, get rid of the bunny. Um, I. Apparently, there's a book series which I did not know about. There's just one book. Oh, I yeah, I thought there was but, one too. Uh, there, yeah, there's a there's a part in the book where because like the the cat is like can actually read and is like really into books, and he reads about like how to get rid of vampires, and it's like <laughs> oh, you need to take a stake to the heart, so they literally pull a stake from the refrigerator. Yeah. There, there, there's a picture drawn in the book where the the rabbit is like laying on its side and have like a steak flopped over it and there's a cat like pounding the steak. Why have I read um, this book? Yeah, I, <laughs> I read this book. I it was know. like in middle school or something ridiculous like that. But I was trying to explain that to Shelby and yeah, same exact like what are you what are you talking about? I don't it's really cool, I promise. There's a bunny and his eyes <laughs> glows red and it's white and it's really cool. Yeah, that was I could see the cover of that book weirdly in my mind right now when you just talk about it. I can I visualize honestly, that pretty clearly. I honestly think I have a copy of it somewhere, but I still have all of my books <laughs> still packed up. Because I think I definitely <laughs> might have taken that from uh the school that I was teaching at. And I was no, like, sh- well, if I'm no, giving this is my trophy. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, sorry. So I don't. I can. All I heard was Brandon talking about a plane crash, and then my brain just went. Elsewhere. Well, you didn't miss a lot because it was very vague and confusing, and I don't really know. I'm the owner now. No, don't leave. Oh, I'm back. I didn't get off anything. Okay. I was getting ready to hit the hang up button, and now you're back. <laughs> what the heck? I don't understand what's going on. Okay, so... Oh, no, Aaron just got off right before you came back on here. Because <laughs> I was like... Well, I was looking, and I was like, oh, well, I'll just... I said, well, I'll need to restart my personal meeting. I click start, and then it was like, oh, uh, hey, you're still talking. <laughs> Yeah, I was getting ready to hit the the end button, and here you are, because he just stopped. This is so strange. Uh, Lots of editing this week. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> it was all on my end, too. That was the weirdest thing. I'm sitting here, we're talking, and I look over, everything's up and running, and I'm and all of a sudden, it the Skype or Zoom just like crashes. It was. It was weird. And then I didn't have internet connection for a while. And then I don't know what the heck that was. Yeah, your internet might have just gone away. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, the second you got off, <laughs> Literally. I said out loud, 
All right, here it is, just me getting ready to stop. And I heard Colin's voice go, no, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, the second you went away, he came back. I was like, oh, dang it. <laughs> what uh, what happened? Gone. I think his internet just died. I think that's what happened. <laughs> It wasn't me this time. <laughs> you wouldn't really think that that's exactly <laughs> what happened. There we go. <clears throat> so to recap, uh, all you missed, uh, you can edit this part in here, like uh, intermission time. Uh, we were just talking about Alaska. That's all. <laughs> trying to figure out. We were trying to figure out. Aaron has the same. Aaron's memories don't involve movies. It's random books from sixth grade and or middle school that we read. And he's like, it's a book about a thing with and the kid. And uh, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> by, the end, by the end of this podcast, I will think of this. <laughs> okay. It's Klondike something. What's, what's the movie? Klondike the, Bar. The, no, the book. No. What's, the, what's the book about the kid who hollows out the tree and lives in the what? tree? With, he Hatches. Uh. It. He hollows it out with fire or with like embers because he finds a hatchet. big old wood tree stump. Hatchet. Anybody? Is that Hatchet? I don't remember that in Hatchet. It, it, th- there's a part where he like, because he, he's like discovering like all the things that help him like with survival and 98% sure that it's Hatchet because he's like, he's doing like survival things that he's like, oh. Maybe wow. that's what White Fang's about. I don't know. I said I remember the, the White Penguin was a movie about snow and dogs and possibly Alaska. And that just, <laughs> was on New York, failing me, right? I don't know. The first thing you I thought of when you said kids and tree, I thought of Bridge to Terabithia. And oh I was like, gosh. nope, that's not it. <laughs> then you said lived in the tree. It's like, oh, no, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Um. I typed in Yukon and pulled up Calvin and Hobbes. Like, that's not... Why not Cornelius? Oh. Ooh. Cornelius. Also, also, wonderful TV show, uh, Life Below Zero. Oh, my gosh. I cannot watch enough of that show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> About people living in uh, Alaska. Yeah, I've seen a couple episodes of that. I like it. <laughs> I used to watch. It's not on anymore. I don't know how long ago this was on, but we used to watch. There was a show called Flying Wild Alaska, and it was about a guy that ran a plane service in Alaska because you have to fly like yeah. everywhere. Yeah, <clears throat> and I don't remember what his name was anymore. Uh, but it was just kind of one of those shows. It was just like him and his family, and they had they started like a small one back of the day and now it's a pretty big <clears throat> regional airline that they have lots and lots of small planes and then they have some bigger ones that take cargo to villages and stuff sure. but that's what they do they fly everywhere <laughs> cool the the thing you said that was that the, what brought my brain back to that movie where the people have the geese and they try to they fly home is that it yeah what? fly home fly home they, yeah, they, uh, right. they, they that does sound familiar. They rehabilitate the geese. It was based on a true story, right? They rehabilitate the geese, um, but they want to get them on a native migratory thing. So they get the air, the um, the ultralights, and they describe oh, like a big goose. Oh, yeah. They, they guide they them to, with the thing. They guide them on the thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I forgot that movie existed. I am, one, one, movie. I am one for seven in books today. <laughs> Or movies, so I'm in the win column. There we go. I will search for this dang book as long as it takes. You'll probably get a text message at four since a.m. Since we're in stream of consciousness mode, I when you said the animal movies, it brought me back to uh, the most ridiculous animal movie of the 90s yes that's right ladies and gentlemen the amazing panda adventure that's oh. <laughs> that was not what i thought you were going okay okay at oh, all hot take, hot take aaron aaron your most extreme or most whatever animal movie of the 90s and go oh, oh, the, oh i don't know if it's the 90s movie now but i was thinking like secrets of nim oh wow there we go that's older yeah yeah. I, I thought you were talking about that, and I was like, I didn't want to talk about like super dark and depressing and scared my childhood. I mean, Secrets of Nim, and then Secrets of Nim 2. Um, 
Electric Boogaloo. I'm I am going with I Milo and o- no, I'm going with Homeward Bound. And Milo, no, this is a little older. But... <laughs> oh yeah, Milo and Otis. I Look at IMDb love here Milo and Otis on. so much. <laughs> Legitimately, one of the, like I think one of the core foundational movies of my life. I forgot about that movie. Is it called Secrets of Man? Oh, 1982. Hold on. Let me. Yeah. It's an older one. Find a 90s movie. It's fine. I mean, um. Keep, sorry, Colin. Keep talking. Talk. Tell, tell the good folks about My Little Notice and how, what they're missing out. Um, dog and cat. Zany adventure. There's a crab at some point. Yes. That the cat gets pinched by. Specifically. Yes. Specifically the dog. Uh, is Otis? Uh. It, right, I is, is it? I, remember, I was getting ready to ask you which one's Milo and which one's sure Otis. Milo <laughs> is the tabby, and Otis is the pug, and they go on an adventure. And, <laughs> oh, it really, I just remember the, the, oh. the voiceover that the guy did. And they each had their own voices, and that there's a crab that they get pinched by, and and at the end, it's all very happy because they each end up having like they each have families. Remember, like the end of like yeah. kittens, and they're both so excited to be dads and go on adventure and all sorts of stuff. It's very cool. I don't remember the end of that movie. I remember the crab part, and I think are, that's so are, it. Are we talking about animated animal movies that freaked us out slash thought we were really really cool? I mean, we can rock doodle. <laughs> Aaron was way too excited to say Rockadoodle. Oh, I about that for me too. Uh, the, you know that movie does get a lot of a lot of crap, right? A lot of people dog on it. It's like the worst of uh, Don Bluth movies. They're like, oh no, that's not the good Don Bluth movie. All these like animation people are like, oh no, he has much better work. Oh, like the snobby gatekeepers of '90s animation, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, right. but I think. I, I do remember liking it would be a lot when I was a kid. I think we watched it. I think we rented it from Smith Video about seven hundred and fifty-two times. Just <laughs> <laughs> really exciting. <laughs> Can I have to imagine like Dad taking us to the movie rental place? It was like infinite movies on the wall. Rent the same three movies over and over again forever. <laughs> Done not privatized. That's all uh, I ever wanted. That's true. I found that movie Entertainment. And I own it now, by the way. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I can't believe they got Christopher Plummer, yeah, to be the Grand Duke in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he talks about so. just like, like, like <laughs> overcasting. I like, granted, he, you know, <laughs> like, you got. It's so good. You do? He played what? What? <laughs> yeah, I think Aaron and I watch that movie way too much. Because to this day, someone will say something like, "What's that?" And I'll go, oh, galore And then everyone just looks at me <laughs> like I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, now I'm Tim Conway. Great. Like, oh. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Sorry. But I do that all the time. It's Wokalar. And they're like, "What?" Because <laughs> no one else has seen that movie. Sure. I think it's me and you and Aaron. Aaron and that's it. Yeah, that's and it. nobody. <laughs> <laughs> nobody else I've ever met has seen it. Nobody. Even people that are like, oh yeah, I love Don Knotts movies. They always like the Ghost of Mr. Chicken. Or like the Apple Dumpling games. Like, oh man, you seen Private Eyes? Like, no. Like, what, like, what is that? Like, <laughs> oh. Come on, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. To be clear, I was pointing out that Christopher Plummer was in Rockadoodle. Or, uh, <laughs> not, not Don Knotts, Private Eyes. Oh yes, I know, but I just got <laughs> sidetracked with them. I, sure that we, I do know. Man, that's More such a clear. Good movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that I like. I did really like that one. And I really <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people haven't seen that one either. That's not a popular one, right? Like, not, not a lot of people. You're like, oh man. Because I've seen a lot of the other movies of that time and even other movies by him, right? After he left Disney. Like, oh man, you know, this movie's great. Like the Nim and all those. And they're like, oh, what about Rocket Doodle? They're like, huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's not sleeping right. On, sleeping on Rocket Doodle. What are you doing? <laughs> 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 I 
Aaron, I think you should probably summarize the plot for all the listeners who have yeah, also not seen Rocket Jack anymore. <laughs> I don't know if I can. That's the problem. <laughs> um, oh boy, howdy! Something about a kid that gets turned into a cat, and then like trying to get him a home to the real world. And and uh, Chanticleer is a magical singing rooster. That uh, slash is, Elvis, slash right? Elvis, like, <laughs> yes, person. <laughs> So there's a little bit of that going on. There you go. Um, and yeah, that's kind of. Oh, well, that's but why do you remember why they need Chanticleer? Why does the rooster have to crow? He, he brings he brings the sun up. Right, because it's raining and it's nighttime and the owls are coming or something. Yes, and Mr. Plumber has, uh, wants to plunge the world into total perpetual darkness so that the owls will rule yes. once and forever and no, not be shunned and kept in dark and in barns during the day that they may rule. Yes, because as you know. The sunlight burns owls till they die. Apparently, they're like <laughs> ghosts or trolls or something. They just can't be vampires. They literally can't be in the sun. That's about right. So they, yes, that's what they do. They, that's the movie. Basically, they have to, they have to convince the rooster to to stop being Elvis. To come back to the farm so he can crow so that the sun can come up. Yep. (laughs) So the owls won't rule the world. Yes, that is exactly. It's like when you say the plot of Banicula out loud. It's like this movie. (laughs) No, that's better, really. I guess better, I promise. (laughs) (laughs) It's a, it sounds worse than it is, really. Give, give it a shot. Find it. Watch it. <laughs> like it's really good. I promise. Include, include links to this in the show notes. People can go. <laughs> Definitely, it is a real thing. <laughs> it's, we're not just making it up. We did not just fall out of too many trees as children. We also did that, but not because <laughs> these are not related. <laughs> you can have both. This is what's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm just reading these quotes from Private Eyes, and <laughs> they just sound so absurd when you just read, try and read them with a plain face. No, they're absurd in the movie. That's <laughs> like it's that's the best part about it. They're absurd with no context. They're absurd with all the context. They still don't make any sense. Give us your favorite one. Oh no, I'm just um. <laughs> I'm remembering the one. Where was it? Um, <laughs> so, Doctor Tart. Uh, so the other key thing is that they keep trying to communicate <laughs> with pigeons, <laughs> and he says, "You know, oh, what I think? they keep getting shot." Yeah, he goes, "You know what I think? I think there's someone here who doesn't want anyone to know that there's someone here who might be someone that's a killer." <laughs> Inspector Winsip. You know what I think? <laughs> For a short person, you have long sentences. <laughs> Oh, and this next one. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, Inspector Winsip, you better get a pigeon in case we have to contact the yard. Dr. Tart. <laughs> says, right. I'm going to take du- Judy. Harold's been a little under the weather lately. Stool's been a little loose. <laughs> Inspector Winsip, that's too bad. I'll have to put a get well card at the bottom of his cage. <laughs> 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 it's <laughs> but it's the way it's Ugh. delivered, right? These these are so, like it's, it's, it's a deadpan, right? It's just like so, straight, so deadpan. <laughs> <clears throat> I think that's the, I think that's why, <clears throat> like, I don't often gel with a lot of comedy movies, right? And I think it's because like zany, over the top silliness is just not really always my speed, yeah. but like. <laughs> Saying absolutely stupid things in a deadpan, serious manner could just be so funny. So funny. <laughs> it gets me every time, right? If like, like if... <laughs> uh, I think it's why I've never been like a Will Ferrell fan, right? Because it's so shouty, right. and all like loud and ready round and all that stuff. 
like all his comedies, like physical comedy, you know, which is good. It's its own thing, but it's just not my favorite. <clears throat> but like the dry, snippy, like smart comment. So I love it. It's like, that's my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that, you know, that's more of a, uh, you know, Monty, Pi- Monty Python style humor as well. Yeah. Right? Of like this very deadpan. Or I'm even thinking of like Young Frankenstein, where you know, they go, yeah, or like it? visual jokes, like it's just yeah. underplayed, and it's just like the visual irony of what's happening. It's like, what do I do? That holding two things in juxtaposition and just presenting it, like, yes, yes, and then moving on. <laughs> I... and, and as an audience, you're left to like, it's like, yes, audience, I know you were smart enough to pick up on this, and you're going to recognize that this is absurd, but we don't have to point it out. And, and, and yeah, really hit this on the head, like things happening in the background or things happening off to the side or like these kind of things. Like and it allows you to like, I don't know. I just I really appreciate that, <laughs> that kind of humor. That, that, that's kind of so I actually watched uh, Clue the other day oh, with nice. Tim Curry and all them. And I was sitting there and I was like, I forgot how much of like an enjoyable film this is. Just because, because it's just like you know every the way it, the whole thing is presented, the whole the you know the way that it's done, um, the way that it was kind of one of those first movies that provided alternate endings. That's my favorite things. fact about that movie. Yeah, and is that <laughs> is it? That, was there eight endings to that movie? Well, there's, yeah, there's like or something. I don't yeah. know. There's like six or eight endings, and uh, like different theaters got different versions of the movie with different yeah. endings. <laughs> yeah, and so when people would talk about it, they'd be like, "Oh, in the end," and other people would go, "What? That's not what happened." Because <laughs> they didn't advertise that that was happening. Yeah, right. It was just sort of people figured it out slowly over time. It wasn't like a thing. Like it wasn't part of the marketing, which I think is genius. Right, just do it. And then get people yeah. to talk about it afterward. That's that was that's good. That's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one too. I haven't seen that movie a long time. Yeah, that's a, I like that. That, that was one of my because I think I actually watched it with like you guys and. You're all like, I guess I, I think I remember definitely hearing about the whole like, oh, well, oh, it's you know, it has multiple endings. I was like, what? No movie has ever done that before. <laughs> and so I, I just, I just remember that was like one of the coolest things that I, you know, movie wise, I was like, oh, whoa. yeah. And I didn't learn about, I didn't learn about that till like much later after because after yeah. I saw it when I was a kid, right? Because that, that movie's older mm-hmm. a little bit than yes. than us. So like. I just saw it and was like, oh, that's a fun movie. And then later I found out, I was like, wait, what? (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, What else? Another random movie you like that in there? I don't know. There's not enough silly detective comedies, though, now that I'm thinking about it. Because I was trying to think of some more. I I'm coming up short, right? It's either like I can't think of anything else. Mm. Uh, have you seen Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid? <laughs> no. <laughs> I made Susan watch that movie. She was mad at me. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> it's uh, it's <laughs> so it's, uh, it's the only other silly detective comedy I can think of currently. <laughs> Um, it's it's like a noir film. It's mm-hmm. shot like a noir film. Okay, yeah. but it's it's Steve Martin okay. playing okay. a detective. I'm in. <clears throat> and the gag of the movie is that he's acting, and like it's him doing all this stuff, like this really big, convoluted, ridiculous noir story. Right? This just silly. And mm-hmm. ridiculous, and it has all the weird Steve Martin jokes that you're expecting. But <clears throat> this movie is intercut with other famous noir movies. So, like Humphrey Bogart is in this movie, 
but it's <laughs> clips from old Humphrey Bogart movies from the 40s, right? Like Betty Davis is in this movie, but it's just like a cut in. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so they awesome. work, they, they basically came up with like Rob Reiner wrote, helped write this movie. <clears throat> and it's very clear that that <laughs> happened. Yeah. <laughs> but like they basically came up with the plot of this movie to shoehorn in as many scenes from classic noir films as possible. <laughs> oh, just <laughs> So it's like, you're just like doing whatever. And he's like, they'll do it. Like he'll be outside going to talk to somebody and he'll knock on the door. And so that one scene is him out in the hallway knocking on the door yeah. and he's talking through the door, but then, you know, the camera flips to the other side of the room and that is the scene from the forties movie with the dude like yelling back, like, oh. I'm not coming. And it's like some famous scene from a movie and it's Steve Martin playing off this famous scene as the detective. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, really cool. Because like every time he talks to Humphrey Bogart, he's talking to him on the phone. So it's yeah. all these scenes of Humphrey Bogart at a payphone or at a phone in the office. Like they're never like face to face. He's always on the phone. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So it's I like it just because it's silly and yeah. it's completely ridiculous and it has all these really hilarious like situations that they just shoehorned in to make it like funny, you know. And Susan was not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> she did not like it. She was like, what the heck is this? I was like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I was trying to think of more um, movies that kind of have that deadpan delivery. And I think one of the ones for me, one kind of one of the first ones that fit in this vein was um, Best in Show. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> Where it's kind of like this mock, not necessarily a mockumentary, but kind of like, no, basically that. <laughs> yeah, it's basically a mockumentary where they're following the the each each uh, group of people with their dog that are going to go to a dog show, effectively, and uh, the just you know the guy with two left feet and how that plays into <laughs> how he dances and I don't know, you know, like I used to name every kind of nut, walnut, <laughs> peanut, <laughs> yeah, <coconut. laughs> like, it was like. Just, just insane things of like these deep these characters are just so off the ball. And you're like, okay, <laughs> I can, I can dig this. <laughs> the I just like that movie because it's like completely unscripted almost. And it's just like, <laughs> eh, just go with it, improv something, go. <laughs> oh, what is that? It's so ridiculous. I love that. Movie. There's, there's one movie that. I I do enjoy that's kind of like that, but it's like what we was like, what, like what we do in the shadows or something, and it's like a, that documentary esque kind of thing about the the vampires. Oh, I don't think I've seen this. Uh, is that it's, with, um is that with um um John, it, uh oh no, why can't I think of this name um. Hold on. This it, it's it's been it's been a long time since I have seen it. Um, but there is there's a new series out that has like Taika Waititi in it. I think. What, right. But I can't I cannot think for the life of me like what the hold on. Because <sighs> that was one of the ones that would would appear on like. Um, would be yeah. Oh no, not that one. 2014. What we do in the shadows? Yeah. Um, Diego Deegan and Vladislav are vampires who are finding the modern life. Uh, has them struggling with mundane, like paying rent, keeping up with chore wheel, trying to get into nightclubs, and overcoming uh, flatmate issues. Um, so it has a uh, Jermaine Clement, the guy from um, Flight of the Condors, and Taika Waititi is in it. Oh, I do uh, like I'm definitely Flight not seeing this. Oh, yeah, Flight of the Condors. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So if if you get a chance, it, it's it, it's it's a mocky, not a mockumentary. What is it called? A documentary esque, but. I, I guess it's a mockumentary. Though. Yeah, but fake and silly. Yeah. I think that's called a mockumentary. 
Yeah, it, it's a, it just, it's just about you know the life of a vampire in in modern times and you know things like that, uh, which is uh, I, I don't I don't remember where where I watched it or how I you know started watching it, but I was like, is this a documentary about vampires? Of course I'll watch it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I missed that one. Yeah, I do yeah. also like Fly the Concord, so that's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you ever get a free chance, boom, that one. Okay, I'll try to rip that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly high on people's list, but <laughs> yeah. if you do that one, <clears throat> that's right. I like lots of movies like that. They like I just watched randomly, right? Again, it was kind of that thing of like. You know, it was either on or I was just at a back in the day when you had to go to the video rental place. <clears throat> it's like this one or watching this one now. Yeah. Go like, <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I like lots of movies from there. There's a couple that I, <clears throat> that I found on accident that I really like. <laughs> just cause like, I watch this one. We'll see what it is. I don't know. Brotherhood of the Wolf, good example. I liked the movie, and I just picked it up randomly from the movie Rental Place in Rogersville that one time. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's this? I don't know. Let's watch it. But we don't, <laughs> I don't know, but we are watching this right now. It's yeah. It's going to be awesome. There's another one, but I can't remember the name. I also bought it later. But it's not funny or comedy. It's like a Chinese action movie. So that's a conversation for another day. Uh, but <laughs> what was, this was a long time ago, Brandon, but what was the movie about two like assassins? That's the movie I was just thinking. Was the movie I, was just... <laughs> uh, well, I was gonna say like there's two assassins and they are like at, at the end of the movie it's like them uh like trying to kill each other or trying to like fight over a girl or something. Oh yes. They recreate uh the the end of the movie is ridiculous because they have a final duel to find yeah. out who's the best assassin. One of them recreates the the arcade game Metal Slug in a warehouse. Okay, yes, that's <laughs> and it. they play as the characters. The the movie is full time killers. And it's be it's great. <laughs> okay, it's amazing, right? That would be so good. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love it so much. It makes me so happy. Uh, that's a movie I watched just an accident because I was like, "Oh, I like these kind of movies. Let's watch this one." <clears throat> yeah, it's full time killers. Yeah, gotcha. definitely okay. watch that one. Yes, that's exactly it. See, Aaron was there. I think Corey and I were like, "Let's watch this movie." And Aaron's like, can I watch this? Like, sure. We're watching it right now. (laughs) (laughs) That movie's good. Weird tastes in movies over here. It's fine. Uh, We can can talk about that. My love for Hong Kong Chinese cinema uh, at some other time. But (laughs) 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 that doesn't fit the vibe of this conversation currently. It's a whole other side rail thing. And we... (laughs) So put that on the list. We'll add that. What, what, what am I adding? It, it, uh, it's Hong Kong cinema and why it's the best. I mean, it's a thing. I'm adding that oh. after after the mall, concert horror stories, cake wars, food shows, and um, that now we have Hong Kong. Yes. Perfect. You said that, and then I then I thought of the, uh, the Ong Bok Thai Warrior. Film. Also a great one. <laughs> but, <laughs> no. I don't think Colin has enough room on his list. No, it's fine. We can come back to this whole subgenre later. Marsh, we can call that martial arts films, right? Ah, yes. (laughs) But it is interesting how I how I'm. I mean, I'm looking at these movies and um, just similar the similar tastes of like what we think as view as comedy, what that's funny. Um, Do you think that's just because? mom and dad made us watch or you know allowed us to watch you know private eyes and 
yeah. these other things or <laughs> or, where, or where, where does that come from? <laughs> I mean, I guess it all has to. Well, I don't know because like we watched other stuff too. Yeah. Right. But for some reason, we just gravitated towards that <laughs> instead. Right. Because there was we did watch other things. And because I, I remember watching other things and going. Yeah, I don't like this very much. Or I don't think this is funny as Paradise, right? Like it's not. <laughs> so I'm not really sure where that comes from, right? But like, it's a good question. Because <clears throat> we, watch, we watch other stuff either there or like with friends or, you know, other people. Or, and, it, and even just other movies that were comedies, but were more on the like physical comedy slapsticky side and it just never rang the same for whatever reason. Right. I don't know why. Other great deadpan comedy delivery, by the way, Fletch. I just remembered that movie. Yes. That movie's great. (laughs) (laughs) I like that movie too. I don't <laughs> just some of the stuff he says, like when he goes to that lady's little condo thing and she comes to the door, she's got a shower and he goes, uh, can I borrow your towel? My car just hit a water buffalo. <laughs> I was just about to say the water buffalo thing. The water buffalo is <laughs> water buffalo. This is like like what uh what? Uh-huh. It's like uh yes. <clears throat> like what do you have, sir? Uh, yes, I'll have a steak sandwich and a steak sandwich. Like, uh, <laughs> what? what? So ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking here of young Frankenstein. Walk this way. Yes, we made Shana watch that movie. I think I mentioned that before, but she yeah. she was like, okay, it's fine. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, again, just this the delivery, the, the the physical, the physicality of many of this, I just uh, gosh, that's good stuff. I agree. I like it. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good question. I have to think on that one of why, maybe why that didn't resonate is the same as. Just a quippy, funny kind of humor. Like the, just that quippy comment, like in the deadpan delivery of absurd things. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, things to ponder. <laughs> Cause again, it's just like, I think of all of the kind of things that we've watched. Uh, I just, you know, you know, Monty Python just comes up over and over in my head. I'm like, that was huge for me, at least. That was that was hilarious. I I don't think I ever watched something by them and didn't think it was the funniest thing ever. Yes, and I yeah, I don't know why. I think it's the absurdism, right, of just how silly it is sometimes. Like even the stuff from the Flying Circus, like the Ministry of Silly Walks, or like the dead parrot thing right <laughs> i love that that's so great it's cause it's so absurd and but it's just talking it's just not like <clears throat> there's nothing else they just i mean he does whack the parrot on the counter which is kind of funny but like <laughs> they're just talking mostly <clears throat> yeah whereas other things like you know especially the a lot of the when the humor got taken to like the extreme again in the late 90s early 2000s with uh-huh. like uh you know Johnny Knoxville and Ben Margera and all those guys from that crew you know uh <clears throat> like that was never really funny to me sure. i didn't find it hilarious like oh, i'm going to yeah. slap this guy real hard like oh, okay why, would you why? <laughs> like <laughs> And, <laughs> you know, like, oh, I'm going to jump on top of this moving car. Like, why? Like, <laughs> no. and why would you do that? That seems dumb. <laughs> like, I don't know. I never really liked it. You know, the oh, same. Or like, the, oh, this 
prank is so funny. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> any, any of like, I, I guess I don't know if I was just being spoiled of watching any of like the Mel Brooks movies, um, like the you know History of the World Part One, <laughs> part one. Uh, yes. which, by the way, whenever I had my uh, religions of medieval class uh, while in college, um, the the professor was talking about not you know not not the, the whole validity of you know the the Spanish Inquisition. Um, no one and, and and she, no one she, expects. And, and she and she brought up and she's like, oh, I I can't remember what she what, what started it, but she's like, oh, you know, something 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 autumn de fe, and I was like, isn't that what something that you do, but you shouldn't anyway? And she laughed. No one else did. Uh, <laughs> autumn de fe. What's an autumn de fe? It's what you ought to do, but you do anyway. Um, but I like that men in tights. But yeah, any any of like the have you seen that? Have you seen the meme of the Spanish, the, the Spanish Inquisition memes, right? The ones with that. My favorite one is the unexpected item in the bagging area, and then it pans down, and it's them in the, in the Spanish Inquisition <laughs> in the little thing. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. I need, I, need to, I need to find that. But, but, it's great. But I'll, movies, I'll find it. But movies like that, um, where I definitely, you know, when I was little watching them, you know, Monty Python, anything Mel Brooks, like I definitely did not fully grasp the humor of Blazing Saddles until I was significantly older. Um, but movies like that that I watched over time and I thought was just really really funny. And then yeah, watching anything like with Johnny Knoxville or or anything like that, I was like, eh, like eh, eh. yeah, I just never it yeah you're it, yeah it doesn't hit the same you know. Just not like. But quick, quick side note. Um, after much searching, the book that I was looking for a thousand hours ago is oh. called, is called Jason's Gold. Jason's Gold. Yes. I did not. Yes. Google search to hard desire. I don't think uh, I remember that. It, it it was it was one of those books that I that we've read and then like I was so into it that I bought it when I was younger and then I just never finished it. Cause like we read it in school and they're like, no, read it on yourself and draw your own conclusion. I was like, okay. And I just never finished it, but I always loved it. And I have a copy somewhere, but if not, I have it saved on Amazon just in case. Um, <laughs> there we go. Is it good? Sorry, what were we talking about? Sorry, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I had to, I had to mute myself to the the squeal of delight and utter victoriousness. <laughs> uh, good job, Aaron. So, very nice. Yes, I am Love waving it. my my flag and in, in triumph. Uh, well, now, now you're going to have to finish it. That's the you've just set the task for yourself to finish that book oh, and figure book. out how it ends. The mystery. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. There you go. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, but like... Uh, Brooks. Anything with like... That, I, I guess that's why I became such a huge Mel Brooks fan. Is just because, you know, historically wise, I got the humor. Well, his life. comedy is just very smart. Yes, right. it and does. So, if you if you do watch all of his movies in very close proximity to each other, <clears throat> you you will notice that the same jokes are in all the movies, <laughs> right? <laughs> Especially by the time you get to like Robin Hood Made in Tights, you're like, wait, I've seen this joke before. But you know, <laughs> yeah. But then again, that movie is for a younger audience than was watching, you know, Young Frankenstein. So that movie is much more recent than that one. So like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can excuse some of the recycling of the jokes, but like when you watch yeah. it, you go, "Oh wait, I've seen that oh, joke before. Yeah. That one's in this movie, <laughs> or that one's in this movie." Yeah, and he still makes it work with the context, and it's still funny. <clears throat> but you do notice, like, "Oh, that's there, right? <laughs> Got it." <laughs> All coming together now. <laughs> uh, mostly, I think just <clears throat> you mostly notice it with mid tights. It seems like that one was like, "Oh yeah, 
We'll do some jokes. It'll be fine. That's my least favorite Mel Brooks movie. Controversial decision. Yet again, for me, least favorite Mel Brooks movie, Robin Hood Minutes. <laughs> 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 most favorite without a doubt young frankenstein at the best. oh he did do the producers uh blazing saddles space balls yeah to the world i never really liked space balls uh, and then some of his newer ones more I controversy <laughs> i didn't like space ball oh my gosh i know <laughs> Well, this you know. uh, this tour through m- movie remembrance and uh, random movie segments has been with a brief, <laughs> brief interlude of logo <laughs> saga, logo Nothing design happened. saga. Nothing happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Eh. This has been seamless. All one recording. <laughs> Nothing happened. All Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. What's in the show is in the show, unless we're not recording the show. And then, yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's fine. We we tried not to be funny when you were gone. Nothing <laughs> else matters. <laughs> I mean, you were never fine. gone. It's fine. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm always here. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Shh. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spanish Inquisition, no! <laughs> right, no, no, expect. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well. Dude. Anything else on the docket? I don't think so. Probably wrap it up 30, so better. <laughs> okay. Sounds good to me. Me too. You guys uh-huh. have a wonderful. Yeah. Aaron, hello, are you there? Yes, hello. Hello. Sorry, you were like, oh. uh, I didn't know if you were. He left early again. Sorry, I was, no. I, was, I, was drink, I was drinking water. I wasn't expecting a question. I panicked. Uh, like, That's right. <laughs> I'm mildly drowning in my kitchen. <laughs> it's fine. This is fine. I'm fine. It's too much water. He needs Chanticleer to come back. It's got to stop. Chanticleer. <laughs> Rock a doo. <laughs> All right, on that bombshell. Bye. 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 B